At this time, we're going to move to 8.0, which is honors and achievements. And um, Dr. Little is not feeling very well tonight, and he thinks he may have some germs. <laughs> um, so we are going to ask Dr. Tally if she wouldn't mind uh, coming down. And she is going, I don't know if you'll have the pizzazz and the energy of Dr. Little, but <laughs> I don't think anybody does. But anyway, and if y'all see him fall out and I'm over here reading, y'all kind of wave and <laughs> tell me he's, he's, he's falling out. Um, Tonight, we celebrate successes of many kinds during our honors and achievements portion of our board meeting. We recognize our students who are first place state level award winners, first, second, and third place national level award and achievement winners, as well as international competition winners and other one-of-a-kind awards. We also recognize our staff's awards, recognitions, and grants, and celebrate the contributions of and partnerships with our business partners and community organizations. Tonight, we our honorees are featured in our proof positive newsletter. Let's see, I think I have a copy right here. And uh, which was on the sign in table with the agenda as you came in. And if you didn't pick one up, make sure you take one home. And that's a great keepsake. However, you sh sometimes the honorees will appear in a different order. I will read them in a different order than they appear in proof positive. So don't panic if it doesn't quite match. We ask that you stay until we finish recognizing all of tonight's award recipients, recipients as each award winner deserves our undivided attention. However, to accommodate our youngest honorees and maybe some of our older ones, if you don't want to stay till the end, the very last minute of the meeting, we will give you a break and let you scoot out so that you don't have to stay till the end. Honorees, when you hear your award or name mentioned, come on up and stand with Dr. Tally up here in the front while we brag about you. And I'm, I know they're here because I recognize their jackets. Um, the South Carolina student, Future Farmers of America, soil, soil judging team winner from Peelian High School is made up 11, of 11th graders Thomas Corley, Savannah Pennington, and Bryson Shumpert. Y'all come on up. And 10th grader Michael Fields, who dug deep for a win in the recent South Carolina State Future Farmers of America Soil Judging Contest. And, and I think Dr. Little will tell you this is his very favorite outfit of all of our award winners. He covets your jackets, guys. So if you take it off for a little bit, you'll know where it went. It's in his office. The two-part competition includes classifying soils by their characteristics, surface texture, subsoil permeability, rooting depth, erosion, drainage, and slope, as well as land class and subclass. This in-depth knowledge competition earns the team points. The team then selects the appropriate recommended land treatments, which also earn them points. Tonight, their advisors are Frank Stover and Jesse Zeiser. Are they up here too? Come on, y'all come on up. And y'all, let's give all of these students a round of applause. Thank you guys. And if you ever get invited to a Future Farmers of America end of the year banquet, make sure you say yes, because it is a treat. That is just, they do these recitations and these kids just exhibit such leadership skills. We're really proud of our Future Farmers of America in Lexington One. Tonight, uh, WACH Fox and the Atkins Law Firm recognized White Knoll High School's Bria Singleton as their Scholar Athlete of the Week earlier this month. Is Bria here? Oh, imagine that. However, the first, well, here we go. However, the first round of basketball playoffs starts tonight in Somerville. She's not even in town, and she could not be here. This award makes Bria eligible to win a $2,500 scholarship. And let's see, here she is. Team captain for the Timberwolves basketball team, the senior guard, also a member of the National Honor Society and Beta Club, holds a 4.21 GPA. She plans to continue her education at the University of South Carolina, major in nursing, and eventually pursue a career as a physician assistant. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> We're going to wish her a lot of luck because that's a great scholarship to win. If Carolina Springs Middle School's principal Bryce Cockfield and school counselors Brandy Ludlam, Amy Saunders, and Anidra Wilson would come forward, please. I see Dr. Cockfield. Anybody else with you? You're on your own. Oh, I'm sorry. There you are. 
Carolina Springs Middle School's counseling program earned national recognition recently and is one of only 39 schools in 15 states this year to receive recognized American School Counselor Association Model Program or RAMP designation. The five-year-long RAMP designation presented by the American School Counselor Association is awarded to schools that align their counseling criteria to the association's national model and demonstrate a commitment to delivering a comprehensive data-informed school counseling program. The association will honor these school counselors during their annual conference this summer in Seattle, Washington. So that is quite the honor. Ms. Smith, mm -hmm. I got to um, attend a presentation for the ramp uh, process back in the fall and I was overwhelmed at how extensive and I mean the binder and the data and the analysis of the data this is quite an achievement because there's a lot of work behind oh, it. Oh that's great thank you for sharing that. Okay will Lake Murray Elementary School principal Jennifer Stanley come forward I saw her out there. Common Sense, a national nonprofit dedicated to helping children and families thrive in a world of media and technology, recognized Lake Murray Elementary for its efforts to prepare students to use technology responsibly by naming it a Common Sense School. Lake Murray takes a whole community approach toward preparing students to think critically and to use technology responsibly to learn, create, and participate, all while warning them about cyberbullying, plagiarism, and privacy issues. Lake Murray uses common sense education's research-based digital citizenship resources created in collaboration with researchers from the Harvard Graduate School of Education and grounded in the real issues students and teachers face. The resources teach students, educators, and parents tangible skills related to internet safety, protecting online reputations, and personal privacy, media literacy, and managing online relationships. Let's congratulate Lake Murray. Okay, now let's have Midway Elementary School Principal Jan Fickling. Is Ms. Fickling here? She's not here tonight. Assistant Principals Laquana Aldridge and Chris Bussell. Are they? There's Ms. Fickling. Okay. Teachers, and I know they're here because I saw them, teachers and instructional assistants Gabby Adams, Dory Burmas, Emily Cox, Shelley, Shelley Cuthbertson, Kelly DeShazo, Caroline Heinrich, Samantha Leitze, Laura Locklear, Andrea McLean, Sophia Cornelay, Kathy Pexanar, Dr. Katrinda Scott, Erin Willey, Maria Villa... Villa Labos and and Catherine Zahn, Zal, Zal, let's see, Zalm, come forward. And if I know if I butchered your names, please, please forgive me. Um, and if Instructional Services Divisions Amanda Haji and Dr. Liza Spees would join them, please. Midway Elementary School recently received international recognition of its French immersion program by earning the Label France on. Let's, let me have y'all say it. Have one of you say it. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> they got that seal, and she did that beautifully. Thank you. The French Ministry of Foreign Affairs awards this accreditation established in 2012 to schools that promote the French language and culture. It gives Midway's immersion teachers access to authentic educational resources such as French books and lesson plans. Now, I want you to hear this part because this is the really exciting part. Midway is the only school in South Carolina to receive this award and one of just five in the entire Southeast. So let's stand up. Let's, we're going to stand up for that. that. We were there for that, and that was such a fun day. And Midway, how many kids do y'all have in that program? It looked like about 300, three or 400. At least. Yeah, I mean, it was just a sea of children, and they all spoke in French, sang in French, but more importantly, they knew what they were speaking and saying. <laughs> so it's just a very impressive program, and y'all deserve these accolades. So let's give them a round, another round of applause. Okay, 
Human Resources, Kimberly Freeman, Employee Development Facilitator, and Devonna Price, the HR Director, recently earned a respected professional certification, Professional Human Capital Leaders in Education, by completing more than 60 hours of training and passing an extensive test by Battelle for Kids in partnership with the American Association of School Personnel Administrators. Two of only four professionals in South Carolina with this certification, they mastered a set of education and human resources knowledge and skills designed to facilitate effective leadership and management in school, schools, districts, and other educational organizations. Congratulations on this wonderful accomplishment. <laughs> they report to Mr. Stacy, if you can't tell. <laughs> okay, the Mid-Atlantic Mid -Atlantic Athletic Trainers Association awarded, awards White Knoll High School Head Athletic Trainer and Assistant Athletic Director Sheila Gordon with its Most Distinguished Athletic Trainer Award. This prestigious honor recognized qualified members, leaders in their fields with at least 20 years of service for their exceptional contributions to the athletic training profession. She is also past president of the South Carolina Athletic Trainers Association. Let's recognize Ms. Gordon. I've actually seen her in action. We had a student fall out, I mean big time fall out, at a football game I was at. And I, Sheila was the first one on the scene. And buddy, I thought to myself, thank goodness for Sheila. <laughs> Lexington High School nurse, Heather Jackson, if you would come forward, please. There she is. The South Carolina Department of Education named Nurse Jackson the Licensed Practical Nurse of the Year. She mentors newly hired licensed practical nurses and helps them foster relationships with their supervising registered nurse. All new LPNs shadow her for at least one day, learning from her effective procedures. She also leads the district's team morale group, which is made up of the system's 50 school nurses at 32 locations and works to improve the health and wellness of the staff as well. She facilitates wellness initiatives such as flu shot clinics, we might need you in a minute up here, mammograms and health screenings, and <laughs> we think you might have the other one though, and trains staff in emergency preparedness and student health procedures. Thank you, Nurse Jackson. The online giving platform DonorsChoose.org continues to support our educators' funding request. Our most recent educators with fully funded projects include Lexington High School's Ashley Miller and White Knoll Middle School's Candace Lett. Ashley Miller received funding for the Wildcat TV Need Your Help initiative to buy film production equipment such as tripods and SD cards needed to produce Wildcat TV. Broadcasting students at Lexington High School create segments on various current events and topics from sports to art and produce a daily show for the student body. Candace Lett, the literacy coach at White Knoll Middle, received funding to purchase young adult novels written by popular authors such as Nick Stone, Angie Thomas, Rory Powers, and Veronica Roth. These books will serve as prizes for students who participate in an upcoming reading challenge hosted by the South Carolina Association of School Librarians. She also attended Y'all Fest, did I say that right? Y'all Fest, a young adult book event, and was able to get the authors to sign cards that will be given to the challenge winners along with their new books. That sounds like a Southern festival. So anyway, are they not here? But let's give them a round of applause. Okay, thank you for taking the time to help us recognize the many honors and achievements of our students and staff and the many contributions of our local businesses and community. We love sharing our good news. Honorees, when you leave the meeting, remember to head to your left and into the lobby where a member of the communications office will give you a certificate to help commemorate the night. Now, just as I promised, you, you are more than welcome to stay, but if you wanna do the backstroke and head home, <laughs> Head on out in that rain, and maybe we'll see you next month. Thank you, everybody.